Hey kids, Grey Bobby here. We got mail. You sent us some of your letters, and we're going to read one at the end of the show, right before the goodnight song. And if you want a chance to have your letter read too, have your parents help you go to greybobby.com slash mail to send us a letter. Tonight we've gathered together for a story. In the world of Grey Bobby, this faithful puppy and his sister Betty the Bookworm venture out once more to learn all they can about the God who made them. Let's settle in for another bedtime devotional with Pastor Zach. It was a fine fall day, and Grey Bobby and Betty's school had just added a garden so the kids could learn all about agriculture. Uncle Grey Billy had volunteered to teach the class. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the community garden. As you can see, we have several varieties of fruits and vegetables already growing here in the garden. I heard that you had a Venus flytrap that grew so big, it tried to eat your security rooster. Can we grow one of those? What? I have never grown a Venus flytrap, much less one that tried to eat my security rooster bark. Where did you hear that tall tale? It might have been uh, the word on the street. <laughs> Wait, your security chicken is named Bark? Like, Bark Bark, I'm a chicken? I actually named him that. He's named after Johann Sebastian Bach, the composer. But it's also a play on words. <laughs> no one cares about your grody educational puns. At least I'm getting an education, Barbara. Now, now, let's stay focused here. Back to the lesson. What are some things that plants need to grow? Oh, sunlight. That's right. Yes, Joy. Water. Very good. Betty? Nutrients in the soil. That's right. Uh, uh, Bart? My mother says that plants grow best when you play music for them. Some people think so, yes. It's not a necessity, but... My mother's sunflowers grow best to the sounds of Abba. My friend Moldy? Well, he grew from old orange juice. What? Who is this Moldy person you keep talking about? Nah, it's probably just her overactive imagination. I've got one, Uncle Greybilly. Plants need air. Carbon dioxide, to be specific. <laughs> Nerd alert! Yes, plants need carbon dioxide as well. Very good. Well, I want you all to come over here with me. Here you'll find plumpkins already growing. Uh, don't you mean pumpkins, Uncle Greybilly? No, I mean plumpkins. Plumpkins are a variety of pumpkin that are very sensitive to nutrients and water. The more you care for them, the larger they grow. They all look like they're the same size. Aye, they are. Your assignment is to grow them for the next two weeks. I will mark which one is which, and you will research how to tend them. And in a couple of weeks, we'll weigh them, and we will see which plumpkin weighs the most. Our cousin, Wolf Sheepskin, has won many prizes for his watermelons in the Veldt County Fair. I bet he could grow a plumpkin the size of a house. I'm not sure Wolf is the best source of advice on how to grow anything but suspicion. This is so exciting! My family is really good at growing things. Oh, trust us. We know. Aren't there like a hundred rabbits in your family? We do have a growing family, but I was thinking of carrots. We like to grow carrots. Pumpkins can't be that much different. Ooh, this is going to be fun! I'm glad you think so, Joy. Okay, you have your assignments. I will see you back here in two weeks. The first few days, Grey Bobby, Joy, Red, and Betty got together to discuss their research on plumpkins. It says here that plumpkins don't need a lot of water, that too much water could cause them to not grow well. And here it says they need just a little bit of shade. So we need to monitor the water. Check. And we probably need to figure out how to shade them during certain times of the day. Ugh, sounds like a lot of math to figure all that out. I'm on it! Oh, hi guys. How's it going? Well, we're deep in research mode. What about you? Ah, <laughs> no research for me. I'm just using Bart's Grozilla plant nutrients. I bought some from him just the other day. Bart is selling plant nutrients? Yeah, he says he got it from his cousin Wolf. <sighs> Look, anything you get from cousin Wolf is bound to be bad. Maybe so, but my plumpkin's already grown twice the size it was yesterday. Bart does weigh-ins each morning, and mine has doubled in weight, too. Maybe we should buy some Grozilla. No way. If Bart and Cousin Wolf are behind it, I'm sure there's some catch. 
At that moment, Barbara walked in. Oh, hey, losers. I hope you're enjoying your silly little study club. Meanwhile, I bought some Grozilla from Bart, and my pumpkin is already three times the size it was yesterday. Mm, so about as big as your ego. Whatever. Enjoy sweating it out and doing things the hard way. Come on, Oliver. Let's leave this loser convention. Later. I'm not going to lie. Grozilla sounds really good right about now. No, Gray Bobby. Don't give in. But what we have to do looks like so much work. Measuring out water, creating a screen so it only gets a certain amount of sunlight. Grozilla sounds like the easier way. Well, Gray Bobby, some of the best things in life are going to be hard. Uncle Graybelly told us that once on Sunday school, remember? Yeah, look, I feel the same way, Gray Bobby, but I 100% guarantee that Bart is pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. Later that afternoon at lunch, Bart started making the rounds in the lunchroom selling his Grozilla. Hurry, 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 get your Grozilla. It is selling like hotcakes. It is an old family secret created by my great aunt Greta. Just listen to what the porcupine has to say. I started using Grozilla just the other day on my pumpkin, and now it's four times its original size. Also, Malty drank the rest of it, and now he's like three times his regular size. So, you know, looks like it works. Who is Moldy? Isn't anyone else curious? Bart, what are you doing? I'm selling Grozilla, the newest thing in growing plants. I don't get it. Oh, well, you see, Grozilla is a play on words. You know, like how radiation made that lizard so big that it destroyed downtown Tokyo? This stuff makes plants ginormous. Yeah, I get that. I just don't know where all of it came from. We don't have a great Aunt Greta. Hush! The Old World character really sells it as a mysterious formula. What formula? There's no formula. Why can't you just accept that I and Cousin Wolf are geniuses who have discovered a revolutionary plant growth product? Because, Bart, I know you too well, and I know our family history of selling snake oil, especially Cousin Wolf. I'm not selling anything snaky. Just wonder grow potions that cause plumpkins to blow up in size. Okay, Brushy, I think we've sold as much as we can in the lunchroom. Let's hit up the kids coming out of recess. Bart, um, if you have any leftovers, can I bring some more to my friend Moldy? Who is Moldy? Is it actually possible that Bart has discovered the secret to growing plumpkins? Sounds better than you're having to do math to figure out when to shade our plumpkins. Hey, there's nothing wrong with math. Listen, guys, I think we all might be a little bit on edge because our plumpkins aren't growing as fast as theirs. Uh, you're right, Hopscotch. Right now, I don't know what to think. I, I need some answers. After school, Red stopped by Uncle Graybilly's farm. Oh, hey, Red. I'm harvesting apples. Want one? Oh, yeah, sure, thanks. Uh, you know, Uncle Graybilly, I I'd really like to know more about growing plumpkins. Now, now, Red, that's part of the project. I can't give you pointers on that. Yeah, well, that makes sense. It's just, our plumpkins have grown a little, but not as much as we want. Well, growing a plant takes time and discipline. Now, tell Bart it takes discipline. That guy's selling a special growth formula that's supposed to make the plumpkins grow really big. And are they? Yeah, unbelievably, but Bart weighs them every morning, and sure enough, they're getting bigger. In the space of one week? Well, that doesn't sound normal. I know, right? But Bart says Cousin Wolf's formula is some kind of miracle. And I mean, you know, the scales don't lie. Is that what he says, eh? Ren, do you remember the time when we were on that field trip to Velt? Yeah, it's the first time I felt God moving in my heart. We went to my cousin Wolf's candy store. Everyone would pick out their candy, put it in a bag, and then Wolf would weigh the bag, and he would charge based on how much the bag weighed. Oh yeah, and he messed with those scales. He rigged them so he could charge people more. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Do you think Bart's scales are rigged? I'm not accusing him of anything, Red. But usually, 
If something is too good to be true, it probably is. There's a proverb that goes like this. Unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 20, verse 10. Oh, I remember that word. Abomination. It means... Something that God can't stand. Remind me again why God doesn't like unequal weights and measures? God only tells the truth, Lot. He hates lies. We always think our hearts measure up because the standard we use is flawed. God wants us to be honest about how far we fall short of His glory because He wants us to see our need of Jesus. Well, what should I do about Bart's weights? Don't worry about that, Red. I think I know exactly what to do. Another week passed, and Grey Bobby, Betty, Red, and Joy spent time doing everything they could to grow their plumpkins the right way. And grow they did, just not as big as Bart's and the others. Okay, class. Looks like you guys grew some really nice plumpkins. Who will be the first to weigh in? Uncle Grey Billy, before we start, we have a present for you for being the best teacher in the whole wide world. It is a brand new pair of scales. That's very kind of you, Bart. Now, who would like to be the first to weigh their plumpkin? Oh, Uncle Grey Billy, allow me. Oh. Red faked a stumble, then slipped backwards, sticking his foot up under the scale and launching it skyward. When it finally landed, it broke into a hundred pieces. What did you do? Oh, well, would you look at that? <clears throat> Clumsy me. Sorry about your scales there, Bart. Oh, wow. Unfortunate accident. And a brand new gift. Easy come, easy go, I guess. Well, let's just use my old scales. Red placed his plumpkin on the scales. His plumpkin had nearly tripled in weight. Gray Bobby, Betty, and Joy went next. Their plumpkins hadn't grown as much as Red's, but they were almost as big. Well done! What did you do? Well, we found out that plumpkins don't grow well with too much water, and they only need partial sun. So we created a shade that was time to provide cover to the plants during certain parts of the day. Yeah, Betty did math. Great. Okay, who's next? Step out of the way, losers, because here is the winning plumpkin. At first, it looked like Barbara was right. Her plumpkin was at least eight times the size of everyone else's. Wow, how did you get this kind of growth, Barbara? Well, I used Bart's Grozilla and played music for my plumpkin. Bart suggested Abba. Well, let's see how much it weighs. Oh, hey, Bart, where are you going? I uh, left something in the lunchroom and... Oh, it can wait. Don't you want to see how much your growth tonic has grown these plumpkins? Yeah, what's the matter, Bart? Is there a problem? No problem. Put it on the scale, Barbara. Barbara placed the large plumpkin on the scale. The dial whirled around but it was only one pound heavier than it had started. What? That's not possible. Those scales have to be broken. Oh, I'm afraid they're working just fine. But the pumpkin is so big. How can it not weigh that much? I'll show you why. It was full of air. Uncle Graybilly punched a tiny hole in the plumpkin, and suddenly there was a rush of air that sounded like a deflating balloon. You see, one thing about plumpkins is if you give them the wrong kind of nutrients, They'll grow big, but they're only filled with air. But why did they weigh more when they were growing? Bart has been using phony scales to fool you all into thinking his Grozilla was causing the plumpkins to actually grow, instead of just being all puffed up. And the Grozilla his cousin Wolf sent him was nothing but sugar water. It is nothing but lies. My plumpkin grew all natural with no fillers. Bart picked up his plumpkin to show it off, but at that moment, there was a rumbling sound. The plumpkin exploded all over Bart and Barbara. Ah, oh, grody, Bart! I want my money back. And look, you ruined my shoes. You're totally buying me a new pair. What did we learn? We learned that God can't stand any kind of measure that tells lies. Because we have selfish and self-centered hearts, we tend to measure our own heart and say we're doing fine. And we tend to measure others and tell them they aren't. 
Sometimes people can puff themselves up like plumpkins and think they're doing just fine. But God's measure of us tells us the truth. It tells us how far we fall short of perfection. But the good news is that Jesus, who exceeded perfection, came to give his life for us. In him, we weigh in and we measure up. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be honest about who we are before you. Help us not only to deal fairly with others every day, but also to be honest about how much we need Jesus every moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey guys, it's mail time. This week, Betty, you got a letter. Oh my goodness. This week's letter comes from Alex. Dear Betty, what's your favorite toy? Oh my goodness, this is a great one. I just invented it. Well, Joy and I, we put a giant tin can phone between our two houses. And now we can play back and forth with secret messages. It's the best. Thank you so much for your letter, Alex. And kids, if you want to write us a letter too, have your parents help you go to graybobby.com slash mail. That's graybobby with an E. Now let's quiet our minds and our hearts with a good night song. Now hear the Lord's blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. If you want each week's new devotional automatically sent to your podcast downloads, be sure to subscribe. See you next week.